memories. They both make you and break you. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin, I am a geek. You are watching Kevin the Geek and it is time for another Torchwood review. This is series two, it is episode number five, Adam. Now firstly, just an apology for last week, of course, I didn't quite manage to get the episode recorded in time before I went away on a little trip to Portugal, so my sincere apologies for missing both the Torchwood and the Doctor Who reviews last week, but they are back in this week and we will be going forward without any issues, hopefully, uh, in due course. Now, if you are new to the channel, please make sure you do like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on those notifications. I'm loving every little bit of uh, kind of interaction that we have on here. And of course, we are building up to the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who later on this year, and I've got a few different things planned for that, so make sure you stick around for that. But as it is, we are talking about Adam today, and kind of memories in general and memories are a fickle thing and this is an episode that I always think back quite fondly of. It's a episode that I don't feel it gets the credit it deserves but there are issues with it of course and I'm not gonna lie and I'll try and discuss as many of them as I can uh, in this review today. So, this is another episode written by Catherine Tregenna. Uh, she um, most notably wrote the episode Captain Jack Harkness in the first series. And it's kind of apt, I think, that she writes this one as well, because they are two episodes that feature and focus very heavily on Captain Jack Harkness, a character who is very much an enigma when he first burst onto the scenes back in series one of Doctor Who, he became, and understandably so, a fan favourite. However, still to this point, we don't know much about him. We have learned from that first series episode in Torchwood that the origin of the name is that he took it as part of his undercover work as a con man and we also learned from the season three finale of, Do uh, of Doctor Who that he is potentially going to in the future become the face of Bo. Whether that is for definite or not that's always been kind of left up to interpretation and I can see how it could happen in reality, I don't think it's the case, but hey, that's just me and my personal opinions. But we literally still know virtually nothing about who he is, what really makes him tick. And this gives us the opportunity to delve into Jack's past via the brilliantly written and portrayed character of Adam. Now I think that the way that they introduced Adam was really really clever and the episode as a whole kicked off really really quickly and Adam was basically sort of introduced to the audience I mean even before the actual action started and this was done in a blink and you miss it moment where there was two instances in the normal um, title sequence that you see right at the start of the episode, there were just two moments where Adam was seamlessly slotted in. And again, th th there were so blink and you miss it moments. Now, both of these I really like because it sets you up as an audience member that you're not quite sure what's happened. And... When I watched this, I mean, obviously we're talking, what, about 2007 or so that this came out, it left you wondering, 
Did I actually miss an episode? Is this a new character that I, I must have missed an episode, surely? But it wasn't. You know, it's Adam being seamlessly slipped into the subconsciousness of the team and you as an audience member. And one of the ones that I liked, uh, the, the very first one, again, blink and you miss it, but it actually features the Dalek Tommy guns that were featured uh, in, uh, what was it, uh, Dalek in Manhattan and uh, you know the evolution of the Daleks from season three of Doctor Who. And again, that's a nice little kind of, kind of way of world building because then you take something that's happened from another episode and bring it in. That I quite liked. But then, literally, again, you go bang and Adam is there. And Gwen, she has been away. So all of the rest of the Torchwood team have already had Adam, you know, forced into their, into their minds. And Gwen comes in and she's always been that sort of audience surrogate. And this is used again very, very strongly that she comes in. She's been on a weekend away with her fiancé. And there's this new guy, you know, and she rightfully says, who the hell is this? And then, bang, he is there. He is inside her memory. And I like the visuals of, of when he kind of gets integrated, that it goes sort of um, almost like a negative um, effect. Um, and it's sort of kind of um, the sort of sepia, sepia, um, sort of brown effect to it. I like that. I, I thought it looked really, really good. But this is what then links us into how dangerous Adam is. Because when you think about it, all that we are are memories. Memories is what defines us as people. Because you've got good memories and you've got bad memories and both sides of those make up the individual person that you are. I would love it if everyone could say they are nothing but happy memories. But they're not. They have had bad memories. They've had bad things happen to them. And people have to overcome those struggles to become the person that they are in the moment that they're in. But they will have also had the good memories that also kind of help and guide and shape who you become. And so by Adam forcing himself, you know, you could argue that it is rape to an extent. It's mind rape. It's, you know, memory rape because it's forced into something that you're not consenting to. But it's a way of just showing how dangerous he is. That very easily he is able to manipulate and change exactly who you are. And he does this in a number of ways. Now, the two probably biggest notable personality change that happens is for Owen and for Tosh. And in a way, it sort of kind of flips them on their, on their heads uh, as to who they are. Owen, who is normally the outgoing and loud and sexually um, active and sexually charged kind of person... He basically becomes Tosh. He becomes quiet and reserved and nerdy to an extent. And this manifests in the way that they interact with people, but also in the way that they dress. And Tosh is basically the opposite. She's gone from this really shy persona to this really outgoing and confident person. And Adam kind of says it later in the episodes when he's kind of caught by Jack. And kind of says... Look at Owen. All his cynicism gone. He's a different man now. Selfless, happier. And Toshiko too. She's never been this confident. Now I do get that. And I do kind of get where he's coming from. But at the same time... That's what makes him dangerous. Because they're not consenting to it. And at the fundamental core of it... I mean I think that there are some aspects of what they say and what they do that is true to them you know i do personally feel that owen does have a soft spot for tsushiko i really do i do think that he genuinely cares about her and he's in a position that 
he could potentially love her. Now, of course, we learn in an episode later on in the series the reason why Owen has kind of become as emotionally detached as he has become when he had lost his fiance about three years ago when he joined up with Torchwood. And I think that he's too afraid to go through that again. He doesn't want to lose another partner. And I suppose that Toshiko represents everything that his fiance was. It represents that she is somebody that he could form a emo an emotional attachment to but if he allows her to get inside him you know emotionally he could lose her again particularly in the job that they do it's a very dangerous job and you know i think he's just afraid to lose her and so when owen goes off on that kind of childish and teenage kind of rant of saying, you know, I love you. Um, I think I'm going to leave out of my sight, Tosh. Because I love you. What? <laughs> yeah, there we are. I've said it. I'm... I love you. Yes, um, I always have, uh, actually. Um, ever since we started working together. And in fact, I um, actually, I ache for you. You know, physically, when you're in the room, I, I, I just want to reach out and touch you and... Uh, Owen. No, 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 I, you know, I can't keep the secret anymore. Um, my mum said to me, so seize the day. And so I am seizing it. And, you know, I've got so much love to give you, Tosh. And, and you know, and, uh, you won't know that unless I tell you. So here I am telling you that I love you. You know, I know there's Adam, okay? But, you know, I think, in fact, I know that we would be amazing together um if you would only just give it a chance i think that that is owen's true feelings coming out now tashika of course she is also another one who is very much um kind of she holds on to the things that she can control about technology and maths and and things like that and she's afraid to let herself be vulnerable, but in a very different way to Owen. And again, I think that this allows her, this Adam character, he allows her to open up and to experience more of those joys that, in a way, I think she denies herself. And like I said, I think the way that they act and I think the way that they dress them very purposefully shows the flip that they have. And of course, like I said, Catherine Trigano, she wrote Captain Jack Harkness. She also wrote the preceding episode to this, which was Meat. And they had a very similar scene in both episodes where one of them is working, the person who is in love with them basically comes to them and you know offers to help them and, and offers to get them a drink and stuff. And they're basically the, the mirror opposite to each other, whilst at the same time being the completely same thing. And I think that was a very clever way of showing the impact that Adam is having. Now, up until this point, uh, well, actually, maybe up until the point of the last episode, at times I never really got the relationship between Gwen and Reese Because... It felt like at every single opportunity, Gwen decided to go off with somebody else, i.e. sleep with Owen, or flirt with someone else, i.e. Jack, you know, which is still something I absolutely hate. But it never kind of, there's nothing ever was written to make me say, ah, this is exactly why they're in love with each other. This is why they're together. This is why they're going to get married. And it obviously kind of mentioned in the reveal in the first episode of series two, Kiss Kiss and Bang Bang, when um, Jack was surprised to learn that she was engaged, she said to him, Down on one knee. Well, he, he tried to, and then he had a twinge in his back and had to lay on the city. That's when he popped the question. And you said yes. Well, no one else will have me. And I think that that is such a clear example of 
where Gwen was at that point. I mean, she got so emotionally, uh, you know, charged, you know, at the at the idea of Reese dying at the end of series one. And yes, it's an emotional scene, and I do cry every time I watch it. But the very first time, I didn't watch it, and. Now I think the reason that I cry when I'm watching that scene is because I do understand that she really does love him. But at that point, before I'd seen everything in series two and beyond, I never understood why. And the whole idea that by forcing himself onto Gwen, she then forgets who Reese is. And that is such a great thing to do for them as a pairing. Because it made them have to fall in love again. I mean, the whole scene where Gwen comes home and Reese surprises her and she gets all terrified. She thinks that there's this stalker who's broken into her flat. A very persistent stalker, I must add, who, if he would have gone to the length of putting up photographs of the pair of them, you know. Um, but, it, but it's, you know, the, the fact that she just completely forgets who he is there's something missing between Gwen and Reese, And so the scene where Reese has to kind of explain how they met, that's a really touching scene. And like I said, it enables us as a viewer to understand why they fell in love in the first place. Then you have that kind of follow-up scene in the uh, kind of supermarkets and they have the whole Reese the rant kind of thing. It's just a very, very good episode them two as a pairing and I absolutely love the fact that they bring them together and enable them to be these wonderful couple and I love then everything that they do with them from here on out but I think it was needed that this episode for you as an audience to understand them. Now of course the other humongous focus of this is Jack. And I did say that, you know, he has been an enigmatic character. So the fact that you've learned in seri uh, in the first episode of series two that there is this mysterious grey character linked to Jack's path, you wonder who he is. And here we find it out. It's his brother. His brother who was taken by nameless and faceless creatures. Which I think was a very smart decision because I think they could have spent too much time designing and creating these creatures, but it would have taken away from the impact, I think, of this story, which is supposed to be this really emotional and character driven uh, episode. And to feature these kind of alien creatures, I, I, I think just think it would have taken away from it. I would say at times I felt the acting by John Barrowman was a little bit wooden and did kind of detract a little bit. But the way that it was written about Jack, it was really intriguing. And the thing that topped it off was the music. And I've said this in so many times. Music can absolutely make or break a episode or a scene. And this beautiful, haunting music is just phenomenal. It just puts you at a real sense of unease. And this is the point where Murray Gold is truly meeting his of his composing era for Doctor Who and Torchwood. He has a lot of great stuff down the line as well, but this, I think, is his true peak era. I, I honestly think that this episode is just one that is easily forgotten about, um, ironically, <laughs> as it's all about memories, but I don't think it really should be. It is such a great character piece, and... This is Torchwood kind of at its finest. It is when it delves into humans and human emotions. That's what makes it so bloody good. 
And yes, okay, there are, you know, downsides. Like there is to any movie or TV series or book or video game or any kind of media. But the stuff that it does is brilliant. And I love Adam. Now, there is uh, apparently an audio drama, one of the big Finnish ones, uh, which is apparently a bit of a sequel to this with Adam. Um, I might try and, and listen to that at some point. I'd be interested to know, you know, do they kind of rehash it or do they do something a little bit different with it? Because they kind of left it in a way that Adam could have survived because, of course, they take the amnesia pills to forget Adam, to get rid of him which I feel is quite a smart thing to do, but they don't show it, and maybe it did happen off screen, but they did show that Reese very briefly in the episode met him, and unless they gave him an amnesia pill, he will have remembered Adam, and so Adam therefore technically does exist still. Um, so, you know, you never know. I'd be interested if they ever brought Adam into Doctor Who, I would be interested to see how differently they could approach it. And I think that he's a character that would really work in Doctor Who. As long as you do it well. Because, again, you don't want to do something that is just a rehash. You've got to do something kind of new and different. But what are your thoughts with Adam and this episode of Torchwood? Remember, coming up tomorrow, we have got the latest review of Doctor Who, which is Series 4, Episode 3, The Planet of the Ood, one I really am looking forward to, to reviewing. And then you also have, uh, next week, we've got the return of Martha Jones in both episodes, really. It's quite, quite nicely timed up like that. But that's going to do it for today. Make sure you check out all my other stuff. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. But until next time, my name's Kevin. I am a geek, and you've been watching Kevin the Geek. Goodbye.